talk about is what you can control. Getting that seed in the ground correctly so that you get your maximum return on that investment. Depth control is showing huge on the differentiation between planting that seed in the correct moisture depending on the field circumstances come spring. Now is there that target zone, that two and a half or that three inch or three and a half, which one's better? Well, it all depends on the field itself. This year, three inches performing better and the Minnesota field that the moisture conditions that we had, better growing environment for that at that time. When we think about the planter, why is it important to make sure that the depth I set is one that gets seeds into moisture? Well, as we look at these three ears from three different planting depths, we see that when we're not in moisture at all and we get late emergence, potentially even it takes rain until there's enough moisture for these plants to germinate, we can lose the ear. If I look at this, I say, well, I have an ear. It doesn't look too bad. This was still a shallow planting depth that caused late emergence, just not two leaf collars behind, about a leaf collar behind. But when we compare it to the correct depth for the field, where we had consistent emergence because of consistent moisture, we see the difference. And so planting depth plays a big role. We need to get deep enough. Here on the crop tour with Agco, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is singulation and its impact on yield. Um, skips and multiples obviously are gonna cost us yield. And we're trying to quantify, well, how much does it actually cost? Last year, we took the crop tour sites to yield and found that for every 1% decrease in singulation percentage, there was a 1.1 bushel per acre decrease in yield. The thing to keep in mind as a grower is that even 96% singulation still has room for improvement. 96% compared to 99% singulation still leaves about 3.3 bushels per acre on the table. And you think about on 1,000 acres, that's 3,300 bushels of $3, that's about $10,000 that's lost. This year in the crop tour on seven planters running V sets, seven different planters, seven different operators, but the same metering system, the average singulation that was achieved was 99.7%. So these two ears are out of the field. This was a double. So you see this one really didn't produce much. Maybe it won't even get harvested. This one's small because of the competition. This ear was beside a skip. So we had a skip, no ear, and then this ear. This ear is slightly bigger than a traditional ear off of a well-singulated plant, but because of the skip, we have to make up 100% of an ear. We probably only got a 10% increase, so we still have about an 80% yield loss in that spot. So then, when it comes to the planter and the delivery system itself, we need to control the seeds, so we eliminate the issues that are caused with row unit bounce, and that's what SpeedTube does. It controls the seeds in a flighted belt down to the seed furrow. So if I have row unit bounce as I'm planting, it's not affecting seed spacing. And then the seeds are released rearward the same speed the planter is traveling forward. Velocities cancel out and the seed just falls and we don't get roll or bounce in the seed trench. And so two main takeaways from the crop tour plots. Number one is to the, to the farmer, do you know your singulation? What percentage is, you, is your singulation or are you only measuring population while you plant? If you're only measuring population, it's possible you could have skips and doubles and not know because your monitor won't tell you that. The second question then is, if you don't have singulation of 99 plus percent, what can you do for next season, for the 2018 planting season to improve? It could be some metering technology. It could be measurement so you can improve your planter. But with anything that gets changed for next year, we need to drive towards having the optimum close to 100% singulation that we can because it definitely has yield impacts.